The last entry in our DIY barbecue series, we teamed up with Caroline and Tony, the team from Brooklyn Soda Works, to make a fresh homemade soda using local seasonal fruits and herbs. This week on Working Class Foodies. So Brooklyn Soda Works is me and my boyfriend. Tony and I decided to start this project. We have been thinking about cocktail recipes and how we could make a beverage that you'd want to drink but that didn't taste like a soda, but you really utilize fresh ingredients. We put an application to the Brooklyn Flea. And we had six to eight weeks to come up with a couple <laughs> grand worth of equipment. I had heard about the platform kickstarter.com where you can raise funds for a project. And we put in a relatively modest goal and we actually achieved it in four days. And then two weeks later, it was our first day at the flea. So we debuted with lemon ginger, cucumber, lime, and sea salt, and grapefruit, jalapeno, and honey, which has now become a staple at the flea. And the response was awesome. We were sold out by 3.45. We did strawberry and green peppercorn last week. And two weeks ago, we did strawberry, pink peppercorn, and hops. And the one I'm going to do today is um, cherry and Thai basil. Cherries are just coming to season, so I'm hoping that the, the sweetness and the tartness of the cherries are balanced out by this, like the great aroma that Thai basil has. The night before, you should wash your Thai basil, remove any kind of brown gunky parts. You're going to rip off the leaves. You're going to put it into about half a litre, 500 ml of cold water, and then you're going to take a wooden stick, or if you happen to be a bartender and you have a muddler, you can take that. But you're going to bruise, muddle up the Thai basil leaves so that they release their really fragrant oils, and then just put that in the fridge and leave that till the next day when you're ready to use it. We do our test batches in regular EC soda siphons and you can get them pretty much at most homeware stores. The trick to getting the carbonation level perfect is getting the liquid really cold. So it helps if you put this into the fridge or the freezer before you start. I start it off with half a pound of cherries, wash them of course, take the stalk off. Don't bother pitting them because that will drive you crazy, just slice down the side. and then boil them in about 800 milliliters of water for about 45 minutes. Once the cherries are boiled and soft and squishy and they've released all their juices, taste the juice at this point in time. If it needs sweetening for something like this, I would estimate about a quarter cup of sugar. Add it in to taste, be really careful with how much sugar you add. I tend to like my carbonated juices not very sweet. Filter the cherries. You're going to filter it through a strainer. It's really important that you remove any particles or any bits because the soda siphons are not meant to be used with anything pulpy. It's really supposed to be a clear liquid. If you have one of those permanent coffee filters that you don't throw away, you can use that. If you have really fine mesh or sieve, that's great too. Squeeze as much as juice as possible. Once the mixture is cooled, you can then add in your Thai basil water. You can go ahead and pour it into the soda siphon. Make sure you don't overflow. You should have about a litre there. Carefully put this in. Make sure it's down all the way. There you go. And then carbonate. You can buy these little guys in boxes of 10. You pop them in, and then what you're gonna do is just twist it on. You'll feel, when this clicks, you'll feel it click, and then you'll hear a hissing sound. That means the carbon dioxide's entering your soda siphon. Give it like a good shake. Put it in the fridge, leave it overnight. It takes about 12 hours for the liquid to absorb all the carbon dioxide. And the next morning, you should be able to dispense your soda from your soda siphon. That's it. Dispensing is a little bit tough because it does get really foamy if the pressure isn't totally right. But, and so it takes some fidgeting to get used to. Otherwise, it's a pretty easy system to use. Cheers. I'll get you guys another glass. <laughs> I love the Brooklyn Soda Works soda because they're unpredictable. I go to the Brooklyn Flea week to week and I never know what flavors to expect. It's always great having that element of surprise. More importantly though, I love that they don't use any artificial sweeteners in their sodas. It's just fruit, sugar, and herbs. While you do need a little bit of special equipment to make homemade soda, think of the results you can get. Everything from seltzer water, to a recreation of your favorite cola, cream soda, or root beer, to fantastic and creative fruit and herb concoctions like the ones made by Brooklyn Soda Works. It teaches you a lot about how to experiment with your local seasonal fruit. I was really surprised to find myself thinking of all sorts of different ways to use fruits and herbs that I'd never thought of before making soda. These sodas, while fantastic on their own, also make excellent mixers for anybody who likes a slightly more grown-up drink.
The total cost for our homemade cherry and Thai basil soda came to about $8, and that includes the cherries, the Thai basil, and the carbonator pack. We really want to thank Caroline and Tony, the team at Brooklyn Soda Works, for showing us how to make delicious homemade soda at home. And we want to thank the Brooklyn Flea for hosting Brooklyn Soda Works and so many other fantastic vendors every weekend here in Brooklyn. Now it's your turn. If you've ever made your own soda, write in, let us know what your recipe was, what your favorite kind of homemade soda is, or what your craziest fruit and herb concoction has ever been. And we'll see you next week on Working Class Foodies. Happy Fourth of July. <laughs>